I completed this crystal radio a while back and it works very well. I've got a video on that. So I thought I would make a 3D printed version for people who are interested in that kind of thing. So I made this one. It's exactly the same layout. Uh, circuit diagram, coils the same, capacitors the same, everything's the same across the board. Except that when I got done, this one did not work. It didn't even give me a crackle when I was adjusting the, uh, the crystal part of the uh, crystal diode. Yeah, so I went over it with my meter. I checked all the points. I checked the solder joints for a cold joint uh, all the way around the board and nothing happened until I got to here. And uh, let me zoom in on that and show you what happened. And this is something you got to watch out for because as we are getting farther and farther away from uh, the original radios that had uh, capacitors, air tunable capacitors, the stock parts are, have been sitting on the shelf for a very long time. Some of them never been tested. I bought mine from a company that was going out of business, a repair shop that was going out of business. And yeah, so uh, yeah, let, let me uh, quit rambling and show you exactly what happened. This is the air tunable capacitor. And we can now see that there's epoxy right here. Right out of the bag, this thing was shorted. And let me show you even a closer detail of that. This is how I got them. I bought about six of these and they were still sealed in the original bags. Uh, you can see that, yeah, there's no apparent physical damage like my video I showed on uh, how these things get, uh, yeah, they get, the fins get bent and so on, and so they're no longer workable. But this one came right out of the bag, and you can see, let's zoom in even tighter. You can see right here where I've cut it. Yeah, that's because this was, uh, I think the term is swedged where they basically smash the metal to hold in. This is the insulator right here. These are the contact points for the static plates. And it's, this is just a piece of fiberboard and they put it in a slot in the metal. I don't know if we can see any better this way. Uh, they put it in a slot in the metal and then they smash the, uh, the frame over on top of the fiberboard and that holds it in place. But when this one was smashed, this little corner right here was too close and it was shorted right here. And you can see I took my Dremel and sawed it out of there, which is exactly what I had to do on the other one where you can see the epoxy is covering it. Uh, not only was the other one uh, shorted right here at this point, but the uh, in the act of doing it, apparently the swedging wasn't tight enough and it had come loose. So I pushed it down in place and epoxied it because can't afford to throw these things away at whatever they are. It's 25, 35 bucks a piece now. Yeah, so kind of got to make them work. But yeah, that's it. I mean, if you uh, put together a crystal radio and uh, well, before you even start, you need to check your capacitors for shorts because that's what had happened to this one. Uh, so the last video I talked about the plates being shorted and this one I found a new way they can be shorted and that is through the assembly process like things like this and then you have to check both sides of course because this one is close right here but it's actually okay so that's it for today's public service announcement on these uh, air tunable capacitors hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio building